Hi everyone, it's Zinnia here. Today I wanted to show you how to make a two-player Pong game in Scratch. By the end of this video, you'll be able to make your own game like this. Let's get started. So let's say that I have made this Pong game and I want to turn it into a two-player game. I definitely recommend watching my video on how to make a Pong game in Scratch because that video will help you understand what all of this code does. But basically, we have a ball sprite that can move around randomly. And then if it runs into the paddle sprite, it will turn around and bounce in the other direction. So you you can see it bounces off the paddle. And the paddle moves when you move the mouse. So let's make it two player. The first thing we can do is hover over choose a sprite and click choose to add another paddle sprite. So I'll add another one of these. I'll call them paddle two and paddle one. And let's rotate them so that they are facing this way. And the way you can do that is click here where it says direction and you can rotate the direction of the sprite. So 180 degrees will be completely straight up this way. And we can do that to the other paddle too. There we go. And now instead of making it so that this paddle moves when the mouse moves, let's get rid of this code because let's have player one's paddle move when they press the up and down arrow keys and player two's paddle move up and down when they press the W key and the S key. So here's how we can make this paddle move up and down with the up and down keys. In the motion category, there's this block, change Y by 10, and this block will make a sprite go upwards. And to make it go upward when the up arrow key is pressed, we can go to the control category and drag out a if block. And we can say if the up arrow key is pressed, then change Y by 10. So let's put a when green flag clicked block on top and try that out. So I am pressing the up arrow key, but the uh, paddle is not moving upward. And the reason is we just need to put a forever loop around this code. And now it is always checking if the up arrow key is pressed. Because if we don't have a forever loop around it, then it only checks once if the up arrow key is pressed. Now, the only thing is it can go up, but not down. So let's make it be able to go down as well. And you can do that pretty easily by duplicating this code by right clicking on it and clicking duplicate. And we just need to change it a little. Let's say if the down arrow key is pressed, we'll change Y by negative 10 so that it moves in the opposite direction, moves down. So let's try that out. Okay, nice. So now we can move the paddle up and down with the up and down arrow keys. And let's give this paddle to the same code. And you can do that by clicking on it and dragging and just dragging it to this sprite. And now it has the same code, except that we right now that makes them both move with the up and down arrow keys. And instead, let's make paddle two go up and down. We'll make it go up when the W key is pressed and down when the S key is pressed. Cause then it's like, it's using the W A S D keys instead of the arrow keys. And let's try that out. So now I'm pressing W and S and this one moves. And then if I press up and down, then this one moves. In a moment, I'll show you how to add points to the game, but really quickly, I just need to show you how to fix one problem right now the ball will just pass right through this paddle, even though it will bounce off of this paddle, it just passes right through this one. The problem is here in this code, the ball only bounces when it says, if touching paddle one, we can fix that by making it also be able to detect paddle two by adding this or block. And instead of this, we can say, if, touching paddle one 
or touching paddle two, then have it do the bounce. So now this should fix things and there you go. Now it can bounce off of both of the paddles. So I just wanted to show you that because that's important. Okay, next step. Let's make it so the players can actually score points if the ball hits the edge of the screen on the other player's side. So let me show you how to do that. First, let's make two variables to keep track of player one's score and player two's score. So I'll go to the variables category and make a variable called player one score and make another variable called player two score. So there we go. Now we've got these two variables. Maybe I'll put player two's score over here. Now, how can we test if the ball has hit the wall on this side or that side to make the players be able to gain points? Well, let's add two line sprites that we'll put on either side and those will detect if the ball has run into the side. So you can hover over choose a sprite and click choose and scroll down until you find the line sprite. And I will add two of those, one for each player. And I'll actually go to this one and color it blue so that they're easy to tell apart. Now I'll also name them line one and line two, and I'm going to rotate them just like the paddles so that they are facing this way. And I'll put them on either side of the screen. Rotate this one, put it over here. Okay, nice. Now we want it to be that if the ball runs into line two, player one gets a point. Here's how we can do that. So if you click on the ball sprite, let's say if the sprite runs into line two, let's change player one's score by one because player one managed to get the ball all the way across to here. And just like before, let's put this inside a forever loop so the sprite is always checking if it ran into this line. So let's try that out. So, oh, and I also have to put a green flag on top. So if the ball runs into this side, uh, player one gets points. But here's one thing that's happening. They gained three points instead of just one, which is because the ball detected that it was running into the line and it changed the score by one. And then it was moving this way, but it was still connecting with the line sprite. So we want it to only change the score by one instead of keep changing it the whole time it's connecting with the line. So we can do that by making it wait one second after it changed the score. So it'll wait a bit to give it time to go away from the line. And let's just duplicate this code by right clicking on it and clicking duplicate. And we can say if touching line one, change player two score by one. So it's the same thing, but in reverse. So let's try that out. So now when the ball runs into this side, this player gets a point. And when it runs into this side, this player gets a point. Now here's one thing. We need the scores to start back at zero when the game starts. So let's say when the green flag is clicked, we'll set player one score to zero, and let's also set player two score to zero. There we go. And yeah, that's what I wanted to show you today. Uh, the link to this project will be in the description, so you can always remix that. And yeah, I'll see you next time. And scratch on.